life is complicated and messy, but I have so many blessings now, too. I'm abundantly blessed to be married to my strong Christian husband, Evan, and I'm so thankful to be the mother of a silly, fun toddler. Even the greatest blessings in my life do come with difficulty and struggle. My lesson's theme is the struggle is real, but the victory is sweet. This season of life puts us, I believe, in the best position to grow by leaps and bounds. It may not make sense that in such a busy season we would have any time left for personal development, but huge struggles give us more chances and opportunities to grow. While we think of these challenges, let's look at all of them as opportunities for growth and development. I'm going to be talking about marriage first, um, but I'm not going to be covering the huge subject of um, sin issues like infidelity, lying, pornography, those things. For these issues of sin, I invite you to, um, to get help and soon from a trusted friend, therapist, or elder, but um, do get help for these. So first, early marriage. We're going to talk about the God-spouse balance. Often we fall hard in love with our boyfriend, and then he becomes our husband, and is still our main focus. We ask his opinions first. We crave his attention and his adoration. We say, I need you in my life. It could feel wonderful to have this all-encompassing love for our husbands, but if our husband is number one, then God is not. If our husbands and our children are number one in our lives, then they are idols to us. God will not settle for second place. Believe me, God is the only one that can perfectly take all our burdens. So when we don't need our husband, but we just want him instead, then we'll start to work towards a proper God-spouse balance. So look for the approval of God first. Not your husband. Have this attitude. God, am I beautiful? God, what do you think I should do? God, I'm scared. Please help me. If we consider what God thinks first, then we're going to take so much pressure off of our husbands. And you can see Luke 14, 26 for this. Fights. Spiritual and emotional growth is frustrated when marriage is not in a good place. That's why Paul wished some would not marry. He talks about this in 1 Corinthians 7.34. He says there's a difference between a wife and a virgin. The unmarried woman cares about the things of the Lord, how she may be holy both in body and in spirit. But she who is married cares about the things of the world, how she may please her husband. This is a very important message and one we often overlook. It takes mental energy and work to have fights and make peace again. So we must strive to keep peace and be a unit with our husband because we can actually accomplish so much more for the Lord when we're working side by side. Let's consider 2 Timothy 2, 22 through 24. It says, Flee also youthful lusts, but pursue righteousness, faith, love, peace, with those who call on the Lord out of a pure heart, but avoid foolish and ignorant disputes, knowing that they generate strife. And a servant of the Lord must not quarrel, but be gentle to all, able to teach, patient, in humility correcting those who are in opposition, if God perhaps will grant them repentance, so that they may know the truth. We should ask ourselves, is fighting about this worth it? If you had a week to live, or if your husband had a week to live, would you even fight about this? If we keep that perspective in our minds, we're going to realize, like, this is just not a big deal, and I need to let it go. And all our disagreements would be much more civil if we knew our husband had a week to live. So keep that in your mind when you want to fight. So getting along and adjusting, figuring out the roles, scheduling your time, even simple things like how I might happen to pee with the door open can be points of contention, like who knew? So the answer is to treat your husband higher than yourself. That's Romans 12, 10. Be kindly affectionate to one another with brotherly love in honor, giving preference to one another. Holidays and in-laws. They say you marry the family too, which is so true. Our spouse has many years of family traditions and things they value because they were raised differently. When these differences conflict with our own, then we'll have struggle. Beware when we start to include in-laws or friends in the decisions of our marriage. Then we can also have problems. With whatever in-law issues you have, remember to always be kind and agreeable as possible. Two passages must be considered and balanced in our marriages. That's Genesis 2:24. Therefore shall a man leave his father and his mother, and shall cleave unto his wife, and shall be one flesh. And also Ephesians 6, 1. That's children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. 
money. The struggles are losing a job, changing careers, affording large purchases like a home and a car. Unpredictability can put a strain on our marriages because we as women crave stability. With our husbands doing all they can to earn money, we need to be a supporter. We must learn contentment with less while going through this trial. We can't cry or demand from him more like maybe a fancy Christmas because that will hurt his already damaged self-esteem. The answer is to live within your means and be thoughtful about spending because he or you worked hard to get that money. Work to get out of debt, invest and be a good steward and trust God through that struggle. Evan lost his job in Texas and I started sending out resumes quickly to Florida <laughs> and I found him a whole new career path. So wives, we can be great supporters to our husbands um, when we have financial strain. We can consider 1 Timothy 6, 8, and 9. And having food and clothing, with these we shall be content. But those who desire to be rich fall into temptation and a snare, and into many foolish and harmful lusts, which drown men in destruction and perdition. Sex. This can be a great place for the devil to enter. It could be uncomfortable, you might not feel attractive, one of you might have a lower sex drive, but don't allow Satan to enter here. Be, a willing and, oh, be open with your partner and let no one manipulate the other. You have every right to say not tonight, but it can't be very often. Be a willing and cheerful giver, not out of just duty. Satan will come knocking, especially if your husband knows you can, but you're just too busy or unwilling. Um, intimacy is a wonderful gift from God, we must remember. Um, to our marriages, and it should be used for us to grow closer together. That's 1 Corinthians 7, 3 through 5. Kids, so we're going to talk about kids now. First, before kids, we have to talk about fertility and loss. One in ten couples has infertility. That's defined as not being able to conceive for at least a year when you're trying. And one in four women will miscarry, which is kind of shocking. But it's true. Even if this pregnancy wasn't announced yet, that loss is deeply felt. It can be hard on someone, even of faith. That life was precious to you and the Father. We have to remember, though, that God doesn't want evil for any of us. And, and even through this, good can work out from it. We should try to remember um, that good can come. It's okay to grieve, and it's okay to not be okay through this. Turn to the Lord in your sorrow and pour out your heart to him. Wrong expectations. Give yourself grace, because you're going to mess up plenty. It's okay to not have a perfect house or a stain on your dress. Or like me, I had toddler pee on my dress uh, a few Sundays ago. I just adjusted and gave side hugs. <laughs> it's just the stage of life we're in, and we roll with it. We're going to mess up. When this happens, let your family know that you're sorry. Take ownership and use this to illustrate God's grace. If we set unreasonable expectations of ourselves, we're going to just always be sad or depressed about not living up to it. Similarly, when we have high expectations on our family, we're going to set ourselves up for sins like anger, impatience, and resentment. So not according to plan. I am always hearing that people's birth experiences and children just didn't go according to plan. So if you crave stability and calm, the Lord's going to shake you out of that when he gives you a child. Learn to have peace in your heart, though, and have contentment with whatever comes your way. That's Philippians 4, 11 through 13. So I took classes and got all geared up for breastfeeding. And as life would have it, breastfeeding made me just really miserable. <laughs> um, so I was able to give my son breast milk for five months, but I suffered greatly the whole time. And on my prep, I hadn't heard about the condition that I got, which is sort of rare. So, but having to quit breastfeeding was so discouraging for me because I had put so much pressure on this and put pressure on myself. I believe Satan's lie that good moms can breastfeed, which made me a bad mom. <laughs> so mental illness, anxiety, OCD, and depression, and many things can get worse or flare once you've had children. I never expected to have intense rage towards my son or fits of hysterical crying in the closet. It was... It was nuts. Um, for me, my postpartum depression improved after I finished breastfeeding, but for many women, it stays. Lack of faith does not trigger this. We must remember that hormones and brain issues do. We need to take time to get help because we can't fill from an empty cup. Seek help 
professional help if needed and ask the Lord to lead you through this. Physical exhaustion. Some of you are probably exhausted back there. Carmen might be exhausted. Having little ones is physically and emotionally draining. Y'all know. I was not a fan of the colic stage, and then it shifted to the teething stage. <laughs> and I just always crave sleep like a drug, like I'm just needing sleep. Many children get sick, get better, and get sick again, and it's a roller coaster of disease that some families go through. This can be very spiritually discouraging when you miss church services or you miss your church family. So physical changes. These change, there are changes after we have kids with our bodies. Stretch marks, extra weight, gray hair, loss of hair, varicose veins, saggy breasts, and generally feeling less than you used to be could happen. Do what you can to feel beautiful and accept your body. Buy new bras or clothes that fit you and embrace the new you and know that those saggy breasts nourished a baby, that that stretch mark belly gave life to a beautiful human. Finally, believe your husband when he says he loves your body and don't believe Satan's lies. Trust God's standard of beauty found in Proverbs 31.30. It says, charm is deceitful and beauty is passing, but a woman who fears the Lord, she shall be praised. Behavior issues. So you don't have to raise your hand, but you can if you want to. But think to yourself, who here is more patient with strangers than their own children at times? I know I am sometimes. Who here is more patient with their best girlfriend than their husband? Yeah. <laughs> Sometimes our struggle is the need for perfection or control over every aspect, but we need to have patience for our family. Kids aren't perfect, they're going to have their bad days, but like true, they do conspire against us to test that last nerve and just like break it. <laughs> well, at least it feels like that sometimes. But learn to not take disobedience personally, because if you take it personal, you're going to just stay angry. We need to parent from a place of love and calm and strength. Sisters, are we filled with the fruits of the Spirit? What are they? Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. If we need to remember those with our children or your husband throughout the day, sing the song to yourself. I can teach it to you. Or write them on your wall and teach it to your children as well. Parenting disagreements. Parenting is hard work, and sadly, two people will not agree all the time. Often Evan and I don't even know what to do most of the time and we just figure it out. We, we make educated guesses and then we adjust as needed. Fathers are often tougher and mothers are typically the more empathetic parent. Mothers know exactly why the child is upset more often and the father is kind of more logical and structured. These differences in approach though ladies are why children do best with both parents involved. Pick your battles carefully or you may end up doing everything yourself. And let, when parenting together, let go of the nitpicky details and defer to his judgment. So we were feeding Samuel the other night spaghetti, and he had no shirt on. And I was insisting to put a bib on him, and Evan didn't want a bib. Well, so the first thing Sam does with his spaghetti hands is he rubs it all over himself like lotion. <laughs> and I said, that's exactly why I wanted a bib on him. So <laughs> my husband ended up wiping him up anyway, but I needed to, to let go of that and be nice and agreeable. Sometimes we parent from a place of superiority because we're the mama and we're home with them more. But this can be very discouraging and unkind. Give your husband grace to, make, to fail and don't point it out. He's not going to do everything perfectly or how you will do it all the time, but let it go. Also, we need to be a united front with our husbands about parenting. If there's a parenting disagreement, talk about it in another room. We don't need to be undermining his authority in front of the children. House cleaning. House cleaning is a major stressor for many wives and moms. And if you are like me, my house only gets really clean when other people are coming over. <laughs> but think about that for a moment. Only clean when other people are coming over? Well, who is my main mission right now? My husband, my child, and my home are what I'm supposed to be keeping up as a keeper of the home. In Titus, talked about in Titus 2.5. I am failing and I'm putting them last when I don't maintain a good level of cleanliness for them. We should foremost obviously have a house filled with God and love and food most of the time, but shouldn't it also be often clean? If our houses are too filled with clutter, it's going to affect our productivity and stress level. If just keeping up with all the junk has become a chore, then get rid of the junk and free yourself. 
We sometimes think earthly possessions will make us happy, but they often just weigh us down. We should downsize and simplify if we want an easily, quickly cleaned home. Too busy. Activities, club meetings, doctor's appointments, play dates. This is a really busy season of life. Our culture tells us that we should be busy, that busyness equals success. But that's not what the Bible says. It doesn't support that idea. Jesus often took breaks to pray and be alone. Psalms 46.10 says, Be still and know that I am God. Maybe, sisters, we shouldn't have something extra scheduled every day of the week. We should have at least weekly Bible study time with our kids and family dinners. When adults were asked, who would you like to have over for dinner? They said, like, the president or, you know, this actor that they like or, you know, different things. But children, the same children of those parents, said, mommy and daddy, you and your time are what is most important to your kids. Children spell love, T-I-M-E. Ephesians 5, 15 through 17 says, see then that you walk circumspectly not as fools, but as wise, redeeming the time because the days are evil. Therefore, do not be unwise, but know, but understand the will of the Lord is. Busyness can blind us to the true importance of what we are supposed to do, which is seek ye first the kingdom of God, Matthew 6, 33. And what does this really look like, though, in our lives? This means we know that our time is not our own, that God granted us each breath, each day, each hour. Remember, God gave us this time to shape a young, eternal soul. If we put our job into the right perspective, we're not going to crave so many breaks. We're going to know that our time is really his time. Instead of losing our patience with our little ones, let's tell ourselves, I'm raising a young, eternal soul who I'm training to love God. If we think this way, we're going to approach everything with more grace and more patience and more love. Worldly distractions. So every day my toddler and I go on a walk because he loves outside. And one day I was on my phone while we were walking. And I thought for a second he was just grinding his teeth because he does that from time to time. But I looked down and he had a rock in his mouth because I was checking Facebook. So my guilt over this should motivate me to change and to do better. Sisters, put down the phones and the distractions like cell phone games or turn off the TV and give your children quality time. Humans, we struggle with getting into mental ruts. And, um, we, but we must not let our children think that they aren't as important as worldly entertainment. Our children can also stay quiet and entertained for hours with screen time. But are they growing? Are they learning? We must do our best to set Bible study and wholesome pursuits above entertainment in our homes. I wrote out a list of the things that are non-TV, but like quality time activities, and put it on my wall so I can remember and like have that guilt. <laughs> Bible study. Often we hear very little of the sermon because we're wrestling children. But so we can't depend on Sunday for our only worship time and our only study time. We'll have stunted spiritual growth if we do that. It's easy to let sickness and busyness be an excuse, but you're going to need God's wisdom more than ever in this time. Start teaching your children about God throughout the day. Sing to them and with them. Show them. Your, the more you show your children Jesus, the more you will want to study. Um, a preacher said sometimes you're not going to want to study, but just do it anyway. Once you do, you'll start to really enjoy it, and this happens every time. Deuteronomy 6 6, 7, and 9 says, And these words which I command you today shall be in your heart. You shall teach them diligently to your children and shall talk of them when you sit in your house, when you walk by the way, when you lie down, and when you rise up. And you shall write them in the doorpost of your house and on your gates. Evangelism struggles. So evangelism is a struggle for me because I have a little one that distracts me while I'm out and about. It's difficult to even think of a topic sometimes, much less um, see new opportunities. But I need to realize that he also opens some doors for me. I need to realize that as I train him to be a light, his light will shine and help me to be a better soul winner. Children can be wonderful soul winners. Do keep a watchful eye on your children, but encourage them to be friendly and grow the kingdom. If we, there are souls all around us that need um, salvation. And if we treat people like disease-carrying bad guys, we're going to not let our light shine. And at the worst, alienate ourselves from the world. So let's use our free time wisely, too. We do have free time. 
to keep up contacts with those we're trying to influence. Let's not use our children as excuses to work for the kingdom. Let's actually involve them. So ladies, the struggle is real, but the victory is sweet. Um, I found a little thing on the internet, and they list the struggle, and then they think about it in the positive. So do this for anything you struggle with, and you're actually going to be much more grateful and happy. So the first one is early wake-ups, like 5 a.m. Reminds you you have children to love. A house to clean means you have a safe place to live. Laundry, you have clothes to wear. Crumbs under the table, that means family meals happened. Shopping to do, you had money to use. Toilets to clean, indoor plumbing, hey. Lots of noise, means your kids are having fun. Endless questions, the kids are learning. Getting into bed sore and tired, yep. <laughs> that means you're still alive. Um, listed below are some helpful um, Christian resources that I really like, and I took some of their ideas for my lesson. So thank you, ladies.